There are four Brahma Viharas in all, a fact that often gets forgotten. Sometimes all the emphasis is on goodwill, sometimes it's all in compassion. But the complete practice has all four. The first three form a set. You have goodwill for all, and when you see that beings are suffering, or doing things that are going to lead to suffering, you have to have compassion on them. If you see that they're happy or are doing things that lead to happiness, you try to cultivate empathetic joy. But then the fourth one is something of an outlier. The first three are expressed as wishes. May all beings be happy. May they be free from suffering. May they not be deprived of the good fortune they've attained. But the fourth one is based on a statement of fact. All beings are the owners of their actions. And the meaning is different, too. There are cases where you can't let yourself be affected by what another person is doing. And maintaining that st sense of stability and being non-reactive is what you develop in all directions. There's something of conflict, you might say. Goodwill for everybody, but also equanimity for everybody. And the point is you have to develop these attitudes when they're appropriate. It requires some discernment to see when is appropriate for goodwill, when it's appropriate for equanimity. Now these attitudes don't come naturally. Some people say that goodwill or compassion is part of our innate nature. But you can also say that ill will is part of our innate nature too. I mean, it's just as easy to get angry as it is to love somebody, sometimes easier. So the attitudes have to be consciously cultivated. We may easily feel goodwill, say, for somebody, but it's hard for other people. The same with equanimity. Some people it's very easy to be equanimous about, other people it's not so easy. But you have to learn how to develop these attitudes when they're appropriate for all beings. Because what it comes down to is, though, although the mind may be unlimited, our resources are limited. There are only so many people you can help, only so much strength you have, only so much time you have. So you have to figure out where that time and strength are best served, or best used. That chant we had just now in the, the seven past Buddhas. Think of it, seven Buddhas. And yet we're still mucking around here trying to practice. It's not the case that a Buddha can save everybody or bring everybody to the Dharma. They had to recognize their limitations. When the Buddha was teaching, there was one time a horse trainer came to him, and he asked the horse trainer, when you train horses, how do you train them? The trainer said, well, there are those that are easy to train. You treat them in a gentle way. Others you have to train them using harshness. Others you have to use both gentleness and harshness. He says, but if I get a horse that doesn't respond either to gentleness or harshness, I shoot him. He probably didn't say shoot, because they didn't have guns in those days, but he said, I killed the horse. The Buddha says, it's the same one I teach. The Buddha says, how, how can you kill anybody? The Buddha says, well, if the people don't respond to gentle teaching or harsh teaching or a combination of gentle and harsh, I just basically pull out the pull back the bridge in other words I don't teach them that's the same as killing them why is that because he had to spend his time training the horses that can respond and the Buddha has to train the people who can respond he can't waste his time on people who don't respond so you have to take that into consideration there are a lot of people that you you don't kill but you have to be equanimous about what they're doing, what they're suffering from, what unskillful activities they're doing. It can be for a variety of reasons. One, they don't, don't listen to you at all, or they come for a lot of help, but then they never put it into practice. There comes a point where you realize this is a waste of time. 
because there are people who might benefit from what you have to do or say or think. So you use your limited energy for those. So when you practice the Brahma Viharas, remember, make all four part of the practice. And make the practice all around. Include yourself. Having goodwill for yourself means that you do have to know your strengths and weaknesses and your limitations. We try our best to expand our range of abilities. But everybody has limitations. As I said, even the past seven Buddhists, they weren't able to save all beings. A lot of pe people who can't be taught, a lot of people who can't be helped. That's what the equanimity is for. The hard part, of course, is when these are people really close to us, people we care about. But if you see that nothing is helping, for the time being at least, you have to develop equanimity. So each of the attitudes should be practiced in a way that's all around, so you can call on them when you need them. All of the meditation exercises that are forms of thinking things through, the recollections, the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, the analysis of the body into elements or into its various parts. These are things you want to exercise, ways of thinking to exercise, so that when trouble comes up, you've got them right there. You've got the ability right there. The recollection of the Buddha is for encouraging yourself. Recollection of the Dharma and the recollection of the Sangha is for encouraging yourself. Recollection of your generosity and your virtue. That serves two functions. One, when you're meditating and you're beginning to feel like you have no ability at all. Try to recollect the times when you were generous and, or you abstained from doing something harmful even though you could have gotten away with it. That gives you a sense of your worth. That's an encouragement. But if you find there's only one or two incidents that you can think of for each of those, the recollection here reminds you that you've got to do more. There's acts of generosity, taking the precepts. These are food for the mind. Recollection of death is for when you're getting lazy, because death could come at any time. Earthquakes happen, little things happen in your body, and they don't come with any previous announcement. So you have to ask yourself, am I ready to go tonight? If not, okay, that means you've got to work more. There's work to be done. You can't just say, well, I'll just pack it in for tonight and think about it tomorrow. You work until you feel that, okay, there's nothing more you can do in the meditation. Push yourself more than you ordinarily do. So these are skillful ways of thinking that you want to be able to apply. We do the Brahma Vars for the same reason. They're skillful ways of thinking that you can call these attitudes into service when you need them, when you're driving, when you're dealing with difficult people. Because that's what they're for. Even though we dedicate goodwill to all beings, the primary be beneficiary of all this is ourselves, because we're doing this so that we can maintain a skillful intention when things are difficult or when things are happening quickly. And we tend to have some unskillful knee-jerk reactions. We've got to change the way the knee jerks. That's why we think about these things. And as with any mind state that involves some emotion or has an emotional quality to it, it requires all those three forms of fabrication, bodily, verbal, mental. So this is a complete practice in the sense that it takes all of your energy while you're doing it. And it's a good practice to frame the day. The beginning of the day, the end of the day. And it's good to think about these topics at the beginning of each formal meditation, because it sets your motivation straight. 
You're trying to develop the inner resources so that you actually can be helpful to beings that are suffering. But you also have the strength that you can be equanimous when you realize, okay, this person is beyond help. That person is beyond help. This situation is something that I can't change. You have to be able not to suffer from that. And John Fu once commented, he said, goodwill without equanimity is a source of suffering. So try to get good at all four of the Brahma Viharas. So that instead of causing you suffering, they can give energy to your practice. And give a sense of spaciousness to the mind. 